All right, so I have one shape, <laughs> that's it. But notice that when you use the shape tool, the layer looks different. It's like a smart object. It has a little anchored shape in the corner of the layer. Everything that we make in this assignment from now on, we want it to be that type of layer. And that's what uh, Photoshop's version of a vector is, which means that the computer draws the shape for you. It's not just filling in pixels. And the beauty of that is just this one shape. You see how beautifully curved it is, right? It's still made up of pixels because Photoshop is a raster program. But if I go back to image size, and this is just to show you, and if I force it to be not 350 pixels per inch, but 5,000 pixels per inch, well, uh, that'll probably break my computer. That takes what, what was 30 megabytes and makes it six gigs. And you don't generally wanna work on files that are more than two gigs. So let me make it 800. And that makes it 150 megabytes, right? So that's gonna really blur my image, just like it blurred the painting, you know, when I originally um, sized it up. But my shape will stay just as perfectly clean. And that's the advantage of vector tools, shape tools in digital art. So my shape now on this much bigger file is still just perfectly clean. So if we do this right, we can have a file that even though we're creating it at eight by 10 by 350, if we have the right shape tools, we can make that any size. We can print it as, as a, a wall mural and it will just be beautifully clean. Okay, so what do we do? So I have this shape. To alter the shape, I want you to hit Command T. I want you to get used to that shortcut. Command T to transform. That gives you a transform box. That allows you to rotate. It allows you to, to squish and stretch, to scale. And then if you hit, uh, your, if you right click within the transform box, it allows you to warp. And this is a tremendously helpful tool for this project, right? So now it's no longer a perfect ellipse. It's a little wonky kind of hand cut shape. And then when you're done transforming, you hit return. And then you can use the very top tool on Photoshop, which we haven't really talked about much. Once you've transformed your shape, you might want to move it around. So this very top tool is called the move, uh, the move tool. But you'll notice under the options for the tools, you have this thing that says auto select. And you have a drop down layer to auto select the group or, or auto select the layer. I want it to be on layer for now. So, what auto select layer does is I can just click on this shape and it will automatically select that layer. And then I can hit Command T and I can stretch it and I can put it in place. And is it okay if it's not exactly right? Absolutely. We're just trying to get the, the basics, basics of the composition. So hit return, and then you can use the move tool, move it around. All right, the problem with my shape is it's the wrong color, right? So how do you color your shape once you've made it? You double click within the layer icon for that shape. And once you do that, you get to a color picker and you can scroll and try to find the color, right? And see it in real time. Or whenever you have a color picker in Photoshop, it's a beautiful thing. If you are, if you bring your cursor off of the color picker, you can steal the color with the eyedropper tool from the image itself. So that's not a bad idea. Now notice that's a little different than the image without the tracing paper, but it's getting us there, right? Okay, let me make one more shape. I go to the shape tool and I draw a new shape and notice it will automatically make a new layer, right? And it will use the color I last used. And then if I use the transform tool, I can actually move it and scale it and rotate it. And I want you to play with all these different transform functions. That's the secondary objective of this. So right click, maybe you tr try a skew, 
See what that does to manipulate the shape. Maybe you try distort, which gives you even a little bit more freedom. It locks a, a fewer axes. And then I really hope that you'll experiment freely with warp, which is by far my favorite. And with warp, I can take this shape that's a, a circle or an ellipse and turn it into like a bean shape. It's not unlimited what I can do with it, but I can do a lot. And you have to find kind of the anchors and then stretch from there. Okay, then hit return. And then, if at any time I just want to see what my image looks like, I can just turn off the background, right? And that's what my shapes are doing. Okay, now pretty quickly I have a problem. So I've only done two shapes and I already have a problem. What's that problem? There's this beautiful shape here, but my shapes are covering it up. So this is the next step. Before you make too many shapes, and I know a lot of you have already made like probably 30 shapes. Go to your background. This is the beauty of digital. We are going to use the most common shortcut we'll use this semester, duplicate, which is command J which makes a perfect copy of the layer right on top. Then you're going to take that background copy, you're going to move it up all the way to the top. Then you're going to take its opacity and take it down to 20%. And then you are going to click the padlock so you don't accidentally add things to that layer. So now we have a sandwich, right? And we're going to build shapes in that sandwich. So if I make another shape now, another ellipse, maybe something like this, this time I'll double click and I'll make it white, right? And then I'll use the move tool and I'll move it over. And because I have the slight overlay of the painting, I'll use warp. I know exactly what this shape needs to be. And when you can't get it done with one shape, you get it done with multiples. Command T allows you to move it. Right. Then I can warp. Some of you will be really efficient with this exercise. You'll use as few shapes as possible, right? Some of you are just gonna be like, Making confetti, you'll have so many little shapes. It gives you the practice. But in general, think of this as a design exercise. We're trying to be inspired by the design of this artwork and create it as directly as we can with shape and solid color. So less is more. If you can cover more with one shape, do that, right? Don't get hung up in little details. Notice how I'm starting with really big shapes. I'm not starting with these little circles in the window. If I were doing a portrait, I wouldn't start with the highlight inside the eye. I would start with the big shape of the head, <laughs> that kind of thing. Hit return. And then you can always go back and retransform. And we're not trying to be perfect here, right? Now this is another trick I like. So I just made two white shapes. You know, it looks like that so far. I have to fill in this little gap with white. Instead of starting again by making a, another fresh ellipse, what if I did Command J, which would perfectly copy the ellipse I just made onto a new layer? So if I hit Command J, and then I transform that, I have another one of those shapes that already has kind of a complicated little divot in it. And then I can just rotate it, bring it in, and maybe if I'm being really, really picky, though you don't need to be, I can warp it again. But that gets me there faster than always building from just a basic shape. So feel free to use duplicate.
In about five minutes, I'll come around because you'll have a lot of issues with your shapes. <laughs> but mostly I'm interested in your setting them up correctly. Okay, the other thing I want you to notice is that even though it's white, I still have to make a shape for it, right? There is no default background in this. So even white space is a shape. Now, what, what is the most uh, dominant color in the one I'm doing? Blue, right? So does it make sense for me to try to make a blue shape that has all of these cutouts? If I were making it out of paper, what would I start with? Probably one big sheet of blue paper. So once you have it set up correctly, then you can just make one big kind of background shape. Right? And then I'm actually going to transform it and just move it off a tiny bit so I can select the color exactly by double clicking within the icon and then using the dropper to select the color and then using the move tool to move it back into place. And now here's the problem. This is what my composition looks like. So now this project will also teach you that layer order matters. It didn't matter in your cartoon jumble. It matters here. So how do I move this behind everything else? Well, I can drag and drop it, right? But there is another way that's very helpful. And it's along with some shortcuts we want to get used to in Photoshop. So it's even simpler than that. So we have the shortcut of zooming in, which is Command plus. Go ahead and do that on your screen. We have the shortcut of Command minus. And you notice how you use your hand to do that? Well, just one row down, if you do Command left bracket, it will move your layer down through the stack. And Command right bracket will move your layer up through the stack. Because there's going to be a time in this project pretty soon, once you have a lot of shapes, where you don't know what the best layer order for that shape would be. And you just have to like sink it down through the different colored shapes and see what works best. So that's what I have so far. And then we're just gonna keep building. But I should put this in the video because right now, this is still named after my inspiring image, right? I have not saved this for myself yet. So I want to, before I go too far, save the image to the desktop with my name. Now, this is stealing from an artist. Would you guys agree? So no matter how hard I work on this, no matter how beautifully it works, I shouldn't make money off of it, right? I can put it in a student show. I can use it in my portfolio to show my skills, right? But if I try to sell this as my own work without getting permission from Arturo Herrera, then he has the right to, yeah, to make me. <laughs> so that's the problem with digital. It's easy to use stuff, right? So we're going to start learning more and more about the rights and responsibilities of using stuff because we want our work protected as well. Sure. Like, even though she's not making money off of it because it's someone else's property that she's like, you know, made it better, someone else is still making money off of her art. So now they like full pressure, right? Yep. So image usage rights in the digital world are complicated, but we will, we will be talking a lot about that. So this, this is actually just a time-honored um, artist training tool to to study and improve your own skills by making copies or making versions of art that you appreciate. It's like Van Gogh making copies of uh, Malay's work or of Japanese woodblock prints. And because of copyright protections, you don't want to use it in any way that's commercial, but you are allowed to use it in your student portfolio, and you are allowed to use it in a, in a student context under fair use to improve your learning. All right, let's see. So to get the color for this, 